Hi guys! Today we're going to find out just how much you have to spend in terms of real money to make this guy here good. In my past pre-release video I concluded that this dude is actually quite strong, because he comes with high floor damage that he can dish out AoE, and this gives him huge hyper carry potential since his team damage contribution often surpasses 50%. But it comes with some limitations that might worry you if you're free to play, like his signature weapon being much stronger than all the other options, especially the free to play ones, and his cost conditions potentially being quite impactful, which is why I wanted to cover all of this in a separate video to give this the right importance. I'm also going to talk about how much he relies on specific teammates, because that's part of what makes a character's cost go higher. Unfortunately, I don't have any real-life money around to keep the same energy as the thumbnail, but we'll have to do with what we have, I guess. Okay, let's start by talking about his constellations, since this is what I didn't talk about at all in the past video. Specifically, his constellation 1 is probably what generated the most discussion about his constellation kit, because it basically fixes a problem in his base kit. Normally, in order to maximize the effects of his first passive, which is by far the most impactful part of his kit in terms of damage increase, you will need to bring 4 different elements on the team, because you will need to trigger 3 different hydro reactions to get 3 stacks, which will grant you 160% damage multiplier for his charge attack. The Constellation 1 basically makes it this easier to achieve by giving him one stack for free, and this increases his team flexibility as well as potentially his team damage output. Also, this Constellation basically gives him full interruption resistance, decreasing his dependency on shielders like John Lee. Before we move on, let me remind you all that if you enjoy all of this shitty stuff I do that is still loading, loading, loading... One eternity later... Okay. It's fine now. If you enjoy all of this shitty stuff I do, you can show your support by subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. And also I opened that Twitter where I'll be resharing my uh, infographics and also post some memes and some video previews like uh, this fantastic thumbnail my editor did and this thing that got copyrighted. Fortunately, not something I posted directly, but yeah. Starting from the premise, so what's the best team for constellations you don't use yet in my opinion, so the Zhongli Kazuha official hyper team, a possible alternative to that will be replacing Zhongli with Beidou. Beidou is potentially a very strong option that compresses multiple roles in a single kit, because other than of course being much better in terms of personal damage than Zhongli, because who wouldn't be, she also provides defensive utility through damage reduction from her burst, and a small shield that Constellation 1 creates. The disadvantage with her compared to Zhongli offensively is that with Constellation 0 new yet, with 2 Electra on the team, you will only be able to get 2 passive stacks, so the damage loss will be considerable for new yet specifically, but Constellation 1 fixes this issue and the team looks much better from a team damage perspective, even surpassing this Constellation 0 best team I talked about. My gripe with Beidou, however, is that assuming she can simply replace Zhongli completely on the team is quite off, because even though she provides nice defensive utility with her burst, it's basically nothing in comparison of the best shielder in the game, and while Nuviet heals himself with the droplets he creates through the burst and skill, he will lose an equal amount of HP through the charge attack uses, so he will need a strong defensive presence on the team. Basically, what I'm saying is that while this constellation 1 technically reduces the dependence on Zhong Li as a shielder in terms of interruption resistance, it doesn't reduce the reliance of Nuviet on defensive utility in terms of healing or protection from losing HP. Technically, if what you wanted to do was trading Zhongli's defensive utility for a better offensive presence, that's something you can already do at Constellation Zero, by bringing on the team somebody like uh, Beidou. While Beidou technically doesn't have the same defensive utility as Beidou in his kit, the Crystallite's procs will still bring some degree of defensive protection, and his personal damage is very similar to Beidou's on this team, so at Constellation Zero you can have a team that can match the Constellation 1 team with the Beidou while not having drastically lower defensive utility. So it's not as good as it seems. Assuming you need to replace John Lee's defensive utility regardless, then finding an option that is a true damage gain for the team isn't very easy, because other than Bennett, 
there aren't really healers or shielders in the game that are very strong in terms of offensive contribution. I guess you could make the case that healer like Kokomi or Baiju get much better, because at this point you don't need a full shield anymore because New Yet has full interruption resistance, so really just feel better on the team as healing options. And Baiju actually isn't that bad. Baiju in particular can replace Zhongli very well, because his healing is probably the best in the game at this point, and also his offensive contribution matches Zhongli's resistance reduction with some quicken uptime and bloom generation, so it's a pretty good option. Kokomi actually benefits more than Baiju from the Constellation 1, because she's a Hydro character, and without the Constellation 1, pairing him with Nui Yet wouldn't allow him to get 3 stats. With this in mind, with a constellation no yet in mind, the Hyper Bloom team with Kokomi actually does much better than constellation zero variants, of course, and it performs so well that it becomes the clear best Hyper Bloom team for new yet, and probably the best team in terms of single target damage overall. I wouldn't say it's definitely better than the constellation zero team with Jung Lee, Fisher, and Kazuha. Specifically because the impact Kazuha has on an AoE degree is simply something else, but it's definitely an improvement cons compared to Constellation Zero Hyper Bloom teams. So overall, I would say this Constellation 1 isn't actually that great right now, but it could easily get better if more defensive units that have a real offensive impact come out. His Constellation 2 is pretty simple. He will get additional 14% critical damage for every passive stack he gets the same passive we talked about until now, up to 3 stacks obviously, so 42% crit damage. This is of course pretty nice, it's 42% free crit damage, goddamn, but the thing is, it's probably worse than you think, because New Yet gets a lot of crit damage for free, he gets 38% from the Ascension stat and 88% from his signature weapon. So the thing is, he crosses boundaries where he starts having crit damage saturation. Of course it's still good, but at a point, actually HP% percent substats become more valuable than crit damage. So having more crit damage on his constellations isn't as good as you think. His constellation 3 is probably his second best constellation after the constellation 6, because it increases his normal attack talent, which increases his charge attack multiplier, which then will get uh, increased even more by the passive multiplier I talked about before. So increasing the base multiplier has a very nice effect, and it will increase its damage significantly. His constellation 4 is seemingly useless, because it provides him an extra droplet every time he's healed while on field, every 4 seconds. Since New Yet heals himself with his charge attacks while absorbing droplets, that means he will be able to create these droplets himself. As a reminder, each of these droplets will shorten the charge attack charge time by 1 second, and so they will technically allow him to use more charge attacks. But the thing is that a constellation 4, he has no need to use more charge attack than he already does in the rotation, because it won't be a rotation damage increase. But it will still be useful if you aim to get his constellation 6, which I'll talk about in a second. Before we have to talk about this useless constellation, which increases his, what was it, his burst uh, talent by 3. His burst is a pretty minimal part of his rotation damage, so it's basically useless in the constellation, and it's just a wall before you get to the constellation 6, which is very good. His constellation 6 is very interesting, because it makes him spam the charge attack perpetually, as long as he keeps absorbing the right amount of source blood droplets. This is very interesting, because usually his charge attacks have a delay one between the other, which is the animation time that he needs to spend on field. But with this, that animation time is basically cancelled and his DPS improves by default, and it also allows him to use one more charge attack practically because of the extra droplets he will get from the constellation 4. Since the, there is a gain in terms of animation time, this extra charge attack is valuable, basically. On top of that, he will get additional HP scaling attack that will be triggered automatically during his charge attack, so it's basically extra damage for free. And overall, this is, this is much more damage in less time than the previous constellations. 
and it's a huge damage increase as a Constellation 6 should be. But when it comes to Constellation 6 discussion, the interesting thing is the speedrun potential, because that's what you aim for when you, when you get a Constellation 6. The thing with New Viet is that you're still kind of forced to use his skill and his burst and the other supports to activate his stacks with the passive, so he has a large setup time in terms of supports which is probably larger than most the other units that are good at speedruns. Looking at a speedrun made by my good friend Shaft Head Tilt, this is what it looks like, if you aren't aware. And that's it, over in 10 seconds. The thing is, when Line in this speedrun has already started doing damage and is basically midway through <laughs> destroying the poor Coppelius, New Viet will still be in his setup time, uh, according to my estimations. So I'm just a bit skeptical about his, his overall setup time when it comes to speedruns. His overall damage is, of course, very good, it's just a matter of very small stuff when it comes to speedruns, which I'm not able to gauge accurately right now. So overall, these constellations are great with potential to get better, but I wouldn't say New Yet is particularly constellation dependent. His signature weapon is probably the more worrisome thing, because it's an unconditional, always present damage increase by of 30% over the vast majority of options, with the only the only exception being Sacrificial Jade, which is a refinement 1 20% behind, and at refinement 5 around 10% behind. But getting to refinement 5 will take time, considering it's just the second patch it's available in Battle Pass, so you can only get it at refinement 2. And it's also more conditional than the signature weapon, since the effects will end if New Yet stays on field for more than 10 seconds, which can easily happen based on his animation time. So you, this thing here is extremely powerful and unconditional, and just much, much better than all the other options. And the main difference with other characters is that while a character like, uh, let's see, character like uh, Sino or a character like Raiden, they have good 5-star alternatives in uh, Homa or uh, Primordial Jade Spear. For New Viet, the 5-star alternatives are just trash. They're, they're bad, they're just bad, because they're not meant for an HP scaling character and of course the passives are not so good. This is a bigger deal on Hyper teams than other teams because of his bigger damage contribution there compared to the other teams. Because a 30% damage difference between this thing here and the best free-to-play option will be very felt. While on Hyperbloom teams where his damage contribution lowers to 40%, it's still uh, quite valuable of course, but it's not as noticeable basically. So uh, in a way, him being a hyper carry is uh, almost dependent on him having this weapon here for the time being, until you get the refinement 5 with Sacrificial Jade. Maybe. In terms of reliance on other characters, I wouldn't say this is an issue for New Viet at all. While he needs a specific variance in terms of elements in the team, as a Hydro unit, it can be used on several types of teams with similar results. So, for example, if you don't have Kazuo or Zhongli, you can use it on Hyper Bloom teams and have pretty nice results. Or even on Vaporite's team with Xiao Ling. The possibilities are truly endless, it's a Hydro unit after all, and in terms of elements, it's the most flexible piping you can have. So even though there will be some downgrades in terms of damage with some alternatives, that's just normal, because you just can't expect to replace Kazuma with a worse character like Sayu and have the similar results. But in terms of reliance on specific characters, those would be characters like Kazuma, Jong Li, Nahida for Hyperbloom, and since these are very popular characters uh, that probably you already have on your account regardless, this is not a huge deal. It's not like, for example, re relying on uh, somebody like Shen He, 
which is much more specific. And even then, Kazuha is technically replaceable by characters like Venti and Sucrose, which I calculated on the same team and did not do too shabby. John Lee is technically replaceable by shielders like Leila uh, for a damage loss, but it's still a replacement. So it's not like if, if you don't have these specific characters, you can play New Viet. That's not the case. It's flexible. So there you have it. Uh, New Viet isn't particularly pay to win, even though his, uh, his signature is pretty strong. But this is just uh, regular for a hyper carry. They always rely on their best weapons more than other characters, although Nuviet has this issue more than others because of how specific it is. But he compensates with low reliance on specific teammates and constellations that, while they might look uh, very strong at a glance, specifically the constellation one, they're worse than they look like. And overall, they're pretty average in my opinion. So. I think it's going to be fine. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned and make sure to watch the next ones and also make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe.